Okay, good morning everyone. By popular request, Thomas is going to show us how to make Scottish shortbread. Scottish shortbread and with your own personal twist to the recipe, right? Yes. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a recipe that was given to us. Well, I asked for it at Plain House. When we first moved up to Scotland on our way up, we spent the night at this beautiful bed and breakfast place near... Stirling. Stirling, that's right. So, here we are. But of course, I added my German twist to it. Mm -hmm. um, easy. It's just four ingredients, in principle. So, this is plain white flour, organic, I use. And 300 grams. And then this is about 80 grams. I use less because I usually don't make it too sweet. 80 grams of icing sugar. And then I will sieve this. The tricky bit with shortbread I found is actually the butter. And you need to measure exactly the ingredients. So I have the tendency to just sort of get a feel of it and then um, most of the time <coughs> it's okay but with shortbread just stick to the exact measurements that's my advice and also check the quality of the butter it needs to be good quality organic <coughs> salted butter salted salted butter and we use <coughs> excuse me one Pack. Is it 250 or 500 grams? 250 grams, I think. One pack is 250 grams of butter. Yeah, so sieve this. <coughs> and then this is 100 grams of almond flour. I'm just gonna. I won't be able to get this through the sieve, but I'm just gonna see <coughs> if I can make it a bit finer. Right, so just a little bit, you see, mix it, <coughs> and then I will just add the rest into it, the almond flour, and then we just... So what is this? This is the melted butter. And how have you melted it? And marie so <coughs> basically in a pot with hot water. Mm -hmm. Let it melt. So if you have That's the butter too too um, hot, <coughs> it's gonna be really difficult. If you don't have the right good quality boat butter, it's also difficult. So just so make sure. How hot was the water? Boiling hot, and then I put it in one bowl and added the butter. Let it melt on its own. Okay. So. And I changed the water twice. So no microwaving. Oh, please. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I forgot that people are still microwaving. I know what people are thinking. Ooh. That's too much work. I've got to use the microwave. That's not much butter, really, is it? You know, I mean, if you eat the shortbread over a couple of hours, I mean, it's going to be all right. Isn't yeah. it? Okay, so... <clears throat> Definitely that powdered sugar is making me cough. You're right, I couldn't be a baker. No. Oh, that's coming to a nice consistency. <clears throat> right. Now the tricky bit is the rolling as well, so that it doesn't sort of crumble and fall apart. Let's see how we go today. So what are you mixing it with? You mean the spatula? It, with a spatula, yeah. with a... What's the silicone on the end, isn't it? It just rubber. gives it more it's rubber. It's a rubber one, yeah. More flexibility, yeah. isn't it? And just makes it easier to... Keep the bowl clean. It in. Yeah. And then in the end, you use good old hands and fingers mm -hmm. to finish the process. <clears throat> okay. You can see it's quite delicate, kind of fluffy, light, um, 
consistency of the dough. So and if you have worked you... the butter in it mm -hmm. properly, basically all of the flour on the bowl is gone and worked mm -hmm. into. So the how dough. much do you have to knead it like this? Just look at the consistency and look at you get everything mixed properly so mm -hmm. it becomes like a soft smooth mess so mm. this is the, the ball and then we divide this or i divide it into three portions mm -hmm. so roughly <coughs> one mm -hmm. that's a bit too much two you want to be proper you can use the scale i'm not going to use the scale because right i think this is about okay so then you work one three dough thirds, yep. <coughs> and the tricky bit as i said is the rolling nice smooth ball Mm -hmm. And what are you that? rolling it on? What do you call this? This is a baking What's it? sheet, is a non-sticky... Like a non-stick baking sheet. Um, yeah, it's not paper, but it's a sheet. This is not heat resistant. Mm -hmm. This again is... Um, so it does. the dough doesn't stick on the So if people surface. don't have something like that, what could they use? They could use a normal work surface or a With chopping With a bit board. of flour on it? Or I no wouldn't flour. recommend because as soon as you add flour to it, the consistency you can see, that's yeah. the challenge. Mm. So with the dough, what I might do, I might let it sit. Let it cool a little bit. For a little bit. Okay. I'll we'll, try. We'll be back. Yeah. And we're back. Okay. So let it rest a little bit. Cool down. I rolled one, which is in the fridge already. This is number two. This is ready to go. Mm -hmm. I take some cling wrap. And then gently roll it in the cling wrap. What's that for? Just to keep the shape and protect it so it doesn't dry out. And then you put it in the fridge mm -hmm. for about... I used to do it overnight, but mm. last night I was too tired to do it after expansion <coughs> warriors. Mm. So, a couple of hours, let's say, three hours, and then you can bake it off, okay. which we would show you. So the tricky bit, as I said, for me is always to get the dough without breaking. And what I do is I just mold it in my hand before I put it down. Very light pressure. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we go. <coughs> see. I have to go back to good that this is happening so you are aware that just crumbles. be patient be patient <coughs> we don't want extra flour do not add any other extra ingredients because the secret of good shortbread is it is light it is fluffy mm. it almost melts in your so mouth. is it good to have maybe some ice water that you can put your hands in and cool your hands down or something maybe mm. haven't thought about it Try, mm -hmm. but you but don't, don't want to use, put too much water. No, you don't use wet That's water thing. at all. So you have to make sure your hands are completely dry if you yeah. cool them down. Yeah. Okay. So don't, you don't want any water. It makes it worse. Or just find someone who has problems with soak their circulation and cold hands. That's another to roll it out for you. Okay. So I'm getting there. Can make squares. Try to make it roly poly. Very light when you roll it. Oh, mm. It's coming together. Push it in on the ends. Gently roll it out. And the quantity I've given you is for about oh. three sections. Three parts, three portions, you see. Mm -hmm. If you let the dough um, cool too much, the butter, then it will crumble even more. 
So it's like so it's a bit of trial and error. Yeah, you will figure it out. <clears throat> it looks almost like marzipan, doesn't it? It does. See? Yeah, it's very delicate. It requires patience. Mm. And craftsmanship. If you want to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Like with anything. Okay. No pressure. Pretty much so no there pressure. There goes the washing machine. Yeah. Okay, just a little bit more. See? Very delicate. That's it. If you're tempted to make it perfect, perfect, but then I may end up breaking it. I feel tempted to just pick it up and start eating it. Good. <laughs> smells good too. Okay, there we are. Beautiful. Let's take this. This is biodegrade biodegradable cleaning wrap, by the way. Is it? I still wouldn't recommend that you eat it. You should no. take it off before baking. Absolutely. Right, right here we go. <sighs> Done. Amazing. Now so it goes in the, the fridge. Mm -hmm. And open the fridge. Comes in there. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And Thank now you. we wait. And we then... It's hard and then we bake it. Great. See you later. Here we are. I'm not sure if Thomas is wearing different clothes or not, but we are doing this on a different day from the last section of the video, so... I usually let the dough in the fridge for a day, at least mm -hmm. overnight. Yep. And then we just cut it. I've got this nice wavy cutter that mm -hmm. I really like. Cut it about these sizes. Okay, so the dough is really quite cold and stiff now, isn't it's it? Good. So it's easy yeah. to cut. <clears throat> Oh, they look so good. It smells good. <clears throat> and then you preheat the oven uh, not too strong. So we have put it on 160 degrees Celsius and you bake them for about 11, roughly about 11 minutes. Yeah. So if you're a Fahrenheit person, you'll need to convert 160 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. And how many minutes was that again, Thomas? I usually put it around 11 minutes and I check. Okay. So proper <clears throat> Scottish shortbread is very pale. Mm -hmm. It's not brown. Yep. So just don't over bake them. And then we will take it once next stage once and what are they sitting on here this is a special parchment sheet isn't it well, yes it's a reusable <coughs> sheet that I use. but you can use baking paper baking paper right? is fine yep. yeah there we that's go. so it doesn't stick right and then they go into our purple bunker oh Sorry. the other one <laughs> so this can be done in totally normal oven. Should it be a fan-assisted oven or a non-fan-assisted oven? Um, if you have a non-fan-assisted oven, that's better. Okay. And now we wait. 11 minutes. And so here we are, the finished product. Well, this is what happens when you get distracted. I was on the phone with my mum and it has gone a bit too dark. And also I used a fan bake. Normally I use the normal bake, but because so it's in a fan bake, it's stronger. The f you, what you mean is the fan assisted oven is stronger. Yes, just yeah. be aware. This is a bit too dark, um, but it's good that it happened, like Dan said. So just be aware it doesn't happen to you. So keep an eye on them. Yeah. And even though we said 11 minutes, do pop your, open the, the oven and have a look yeah. halfway through and see how it's going. I can see that Dan's mouth has sort of... No, a little bit on this. Already. I have not been near them. They have at least shrunk. Not, at least not this time. They have shrunk. I think it was you. Really? Yeah, you look stressed talking to your mum. Maybe you were like eating a few biscuits. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. So, um, this shortbread, homemade shortbread, is something that we 
serve for our guests who come for residential retreats. Oh, they're disappearing quickly. I wonder where they're going. Oh. Oh my goodness, somebody's hungry. Um, anyway, we serve these to as one of the um, things we serve to our guests who come for residential retreats. And we put a lot of love and care and awareness into our cooking to make sure it's nutritious and uh, delicious. So if you'd like any more information, well, not about shortbread, but about where Thomas is taking it. No, if you want any more information about our residential retreats, please have a look in the description below.